Is he withholding some stuff that is critical to this issue? Consequential to this issue? If let's say it is something really important during the review that's going to happen and uh, come out soon, we will find out. Mm. If that happens, a lot of shit is going to hit the fan. Just say. <laughs> okay, guys. Do you guys know about the ride out road property situation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, it all started right when an opposition party, Kenneth Gerardam from the Reform Party, posted a post with certain allegations on 6 May. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, the post was talking about the property that uh, Minister Shamogan and Minister Balakrishnan are currently residing in. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to share with you guys some of the allegations. Lah. Okay, the, allegation, the first allegation is based on their minister salary, right? they should not be able to afford the rental on those houses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, based on his own calculation, he said that the property costs around $55 million with a rental yield of 3%, right? It will cost around like $1.6 million per year to, for the rent. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, we all sort of roughly know our minister salary like, of $2 million, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they are not be able to Okay. Doesn't house, qualify uh, them uh, to yeah, rent, right? Okay. I think this only makes sense if, let's say, his calculation of how much the rent is for these houses is accurate. If it's not accurate, then you can throw these allegations out already. Okay, so the second allegations, right? I'm going to show you guys a picture. The first picture, right, shows the property that uh, Minister Shamagan is staying in. Okay. Yeah, so you can see be- previously, right, there's a lot of trees. And currently, trees are the lesser trees, lah. So the oh. trees are being chopped off. Okay. So the second picture is the property of uh Mister Vivian Balakrishnan. Yeah. So that you can also see like certain trees are being chopped off, lah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So what he claims is that okay, all these trees, right? They have some like conservatory status towards them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there must be certain paperwork, certain guidelines, right? They must follow, right, in order to chop those trees down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's questioning whether. Proper procedure was followed. Yeah, la. correct. Oh, no, people mm. even check Google Maps. <laughs> pin them on something. Yeah. I think something regarding the house, right? There is also an allegation on, if I don't know, the car park being built in their residential area, right? Mm. Whether is it uh, paid by, it's not whether. They made, he made an allegation that Singapore Land of Authority paid for the car park renovation mm. to build this car park uh, next to their house. Mm. And I don't know how and I don't know why but I think this is quite a far-fetched uh, accusation uh. yeah okay. I wonder why he thinks that though mm. because mm. if let's say now you look at the visual of the before and after for the trees right understandable these trees have conservation rights you see a lot of them are cleared you make the allegation hey did you or maybe you question uh, did you follow proper process to get this clear. There's a Fine. justification. Uh. Yeah. Mm. You see the <laughs> car porch? <laughs> they won't! Oh, that's your way to pay it! That's why when I read this, it's a bit, it's a bit funny, it's a bit far-fetched. Mm. Uh. Yeah. yeah. So the last allegation is uh, the conflict of interest. Mm. Because uh, SLA right, is directly under the Minister of Law. Mm. Ministry of Ministry Law. Of Law. Law. Mm. Yeah, so uh, as you guys know that um, Shamogun is at the Minister of Law. La. Mm. So, they are, he's questioning whether is there any conflict of interest. Like, whether is he given any preferential treatment? Mm. Is he getting any information that is uh, not Privilege. shared? Advantages yeah. La, to him. Yeah. So, after that, right, SLA actually come out with a statement saying that they, they are all following proper guidelines that everybody else in Singapore follows. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to share with you guys a video interview of... Uh, the, the press to Shangun. Okay, so this is the video. I contacted Prime Minister last week. I was in Central Asia and I think he was in Africa. I suggested that I would like an independent review to look into whether there was any wrongdoing. And you have seen PM's statement. We need this sort of approach, regardless of who is involved, to make sure the system operates with integrity. We cannot let doubts about the integrity of ministers fester and be left unaddressed. I have nothing to hide. We should set out the facts, lay them before Parliament and the people. That's the only way to retain trust. 
Okay, guys. So after watching this video, <sighs> right? What are your thoughts? I don't know. Eh. I feel very uncomfortable. You know, like a bit sad to be honest. Like because all of us we have watched interviews or like reporters um asking him questions, right? Yeah. So when he's answering, usually you can see strength in his answer. But this time round, right? You you don't see the strength. You know, you see. I see hurt in his eyes. Eh, like. I don't know, I can feel like a bit like teary on in his eyes. Yes, he's holding back tears, huh? Yeah, and then when he speaks, it's like, you know, it's like ho holding back or like, it's just like uncomfortable when you feel like hurt, you know, that kind of feeling. That was what I felt when I watched the video the first time. I was trying to understand why he was feeling like that. So, from what I know, right, he was on an official trip. And then, like, in the midst of it, right, he, he get news of, like, you know, his citizens are, like, shitting on him, throwing allegations on him. So when he came back, and then he has to, like, take up this interview, the feeling would be quite off, lah, you know. Mm. Yeah, so, so, I mean, if it, there's some truth in it, it's okay. But if not, why throw the unfounded allegations to him like that? I feel like it's okay to ask questions. Hmm? Yeah. But when you make speculations, when you throw allegations, and there's no backing for these allegations, I don't know if it's fair or not. Lah, because yeah. if we allow this all the time, right, then are they subjected to face this every time they come back or even if they are not away? Mm. It just doesn't seem right. Lah. It's yeah. like anyone can throw anything to them. Then they just have to like keep handling. They got nothing better to handle, is it? I guess yeah. it is right that it is normal for a minister to be in the position of, you know, under a position of like questioning by their citizens and whatnot, and every minute change in their action, uh, that might point towards um certain wrongdoings, people will harp on it. I mean, it's just a ministerial role. But I think, like what you said, uh, I believe that there should be also some consequences for people that throw all these accusations around. Yeah. Because if not, uh, they will not feel the pinch. Anything that I spot, then it's scrutinized. I throw, scrutinized. Yeah, they scrutinize and they post it. And all these are uh, will have a bad and negative effect on ministers that are doing proper their job yeah. and proper work. Mm. And it must be stated that we shouldn't silence critics. Mm. It is totally fair. Mm. Ask the questions, ask the difficult questions, pass them to the opposition members or what, get them grilled during mm. parliament. Totally fair. Yes. But if let's say you're throwing baseless accusations and there is no consequences to it, then people are going to just go rampant in this kind of stuff. The mark will be left. Even if everything has been cleared, yeah. the mark will be left. And, also, and it also uh, takes a lot of resources and time for them to prove themselves when they are not even in I don't know, the wrong way mm. or whatnot. Okay, I want to share some stuff that I picked up. Because I was watching this, a friend of mine actually send me the video and I was looking at it on the way back. Lah. The first time I watched it, I shared the same sentiments as Doreen. I was a bit disheartened. Because I see, you know, you can see a strong man being very vulnerable. And it feels like he feels defeated. Lah. Mm. You, know, you come back and then you face all these. Ah. But as I watched it again, right, there were a couple of things I picked up. So, during the video, ah, if you watch how he reacts to the reporters, he does something out of character. Something out of his baseline. Mm -hmm. Shanmugam, like what you mentioned, he's usually responding with strength. Mm -hmm. When he talks to you, looks you direct in the eye, just expresses himself. Mm -hmm. Over here, he does one thing many, many times. He does this. Was that there? He did this. Really? Yes. <laughs> Did I didn't catch it. I saw it like three times and then I took note of it and it happened again and again and again and again. I think it happened like maybe seven, eight times in the video. If you go and review it, watch again, he does this many times. Mm. And he doesn't do this in his normal speeches. Mm. What this is, right, in psychology, uh, body language studies, right, this is called a lip compression. So a lip compression tells you a lot about how the person feels about what he's saying. Mm. There are three main things. La. Uh, so exactly that, that's the lip compression. La. <laughs> I'm trying. <la. laughs> uh, so there are three main reasons why people exhibit this body display, uh, facial display. 
The first reason is because of stress. Okay. The second reason is mental discomfort. The last reason is they are hiding something. Mm. They are withholding some kind of information. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's a reason why I want to bring this up because one of the things that he stated right is I have nothing, nothing to hide. hide. And the media has gone crazy with these headlines and everything. Nothing to hide. Minister Shan Lugam saying I have, I have nothing, nothing to, to hide. hide. So these three reasons are the reasons why you will see the lip compression. And it has happened enough times for me to feel there is significance in this. You ask any body language expert, they will tell you this is out of baseline. So there's something about this. So if let's say we can acknowledge these are the three reasons, let's look at them. First reason is stress. I would discount this reason. Why? Because he is the minister of law, he is the minister of home affairs. Yes. He is constantly facing stress. His threshold for stress is sky high. But usually his stuff is not related to him. It's always the nation. Yes. So now it's like the, the arrow is like on him. So maybe he feel a bit different now. I it's true. Face. It's true. But I don't think it boils down to him cracking because of stress. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the second reason, mental discomfort. Okay, maybe you come back to this later. The juicy one, withholding information. Mm. Okay, withholding information, right? This is actually a very instinctual response. When you compress your lips, right? What you're basically doing is you're preventing yourself from saying things that you feel shouldn't be said. That's why the body does this. It's a natural response. Ah. What exactly is he withholding? Is he withholding some stuff that is critical to this issue, consequential to this issue, or something else? If let's say it is something really important during the review that's going to happen and Uh, come out soon, we will find out. Mm. If that happens, a lot of shit is going to hit the fan. Oh my god. I don't know, man. I Mm. feel that Minister Shamugan, right, is actually one of the best ministers in Singapore. I agree. I I agree. Minister Vivian Balakrishnan, right, I I say this to my friend, uh, I say, he might be the best minister of foreign affairs that we ever have. But, I realized that Minister Shamugan right, actually hold that position before. Mm. So I retract my Sorry. statement. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I really think very highly of uh, Minister yes. Shamugan. Okay? I feel that he's been holding right. What, what he's been holding right is the true way. You can't the truth. It know. could be. And there's evidence to also believe that. And the reason I say this is because one of the things he said during this interview right is it is not that I don't want to say it mm. but it would be highly improper of me to say this. Mm the review is ongoing and stuff mm-hmm. so it could very well mean uh, he's not hiding damaging information but he's hiding the truth because he respects due process mm. he wants this to be cleared and then he will share mm. what really mm. he feels mm. uh, and especially as minister of law you respect the courts you respect mm. you know any kind of Procedure. legal procedures that mm. needs to be done and stuff or parliamentary procedure so now we go to the second reason, mm. mental discomfort. The reason why it could very well be, okay, I would discount the first one, it could very well be the third one, right? For either reasons. Maybe he's not truthful, maybe he's truthful, but we know he is withholding information. Mm. The second reason, mental discomfort, I feel it could also be something on his mind. Why? Because allegations like this, when they come out, right? People, even if it has been dispelled. People still retain some fragment of this knowledge. Mm. Even if everyone knows that the review is out, facts and findings have all been produced Mm. and they actually rethought all the allegations and are in support of the ministers, Mm. there will still be a small group of ardent opposition supporters. Cannot be. (laughs) Who will always say, hey, you remember that last time the yeah. ride out word issued a situation? Even if it's clear, they will always use this. Yeah, that's the annoying part. So the damage is done and people will question, why is he even staying in this house? So, you know, the government has always put forth the idea that we don't need to spend too much. We can afford stuff, can be frugal, things will be fine. And then to have people questioning him, you say all this and then you live in a house like this, whether or not whatever findings has been produced and support him, the damage has been done. Mm. That might lead to the mental discomfort. Mm. So, 
those are the things that I picked up based on his sleep compression lah. Wow. That's a whole new level to the interview. I never thought about it. Yeah, and the thing is, right, Mr. Shamugam is a man of integrity, you know. I think you would, the last thing that you expect of him uh, is to lie, in a sense. You are in law, you are a minister, you've been upholding certain values or even emphasizing certain values. I think this investigation, right, is very important. The moment the result come out, right, and it points to him skipping certain procedures, proper procedures, uh, okay, to uh, obtain the the tenancy of the house, uh, I think a lot will change for him. A lot will change for the entire government. Mm, 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 it's true. Because yeah. this, this is what they have been uh, drilling, Up- yeah, upholding and drilling the opposition party. Mm. Integrity, integrity and whatnot. So actually, truthfully, I hope for the sake of Singapore, uh, they find everything to be in line with what the ministers are saying, mm. with what the agencies are also saying. And we can put this to rest and it will also give us reason to believe that in the future, any kind of allegations people come up with, let's not be too quick to jump on them. Mm. Let's not give, them, give it pure credit immediately. Mm. 